Hello, Sky friends, and welcome to Seasons of Skyrend, Book 4. We're a custom 5e D&D adventure that focuses on the stories of our characters as they seek to change the world, and how the world responds in turn. I am your host and DM, Scott, and you can find me on Twitter at TheScottBlake. Hi, I'm Chris, and you can find me at EwokKiller on Twitter. I play Finnegan Finn Tempest, a tiefling trainer, which is a Skyrim original class supported by the Metalweave Games supplement Baby Beastry. Finn is the trainer of Cerulius, a blue guard drake. Hi, my name is Nate. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Nate. I play Darvin Grimm, the human monk, and I am currently hosting Cade, the demigod of the land in my brain. Hi, I'm Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Shannon. I play Aranus Gray, the god of rebellion, and I am a half-elf bard. You can also find the show on Twitter at Skyren Podcast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Head on over to find out about bonus chapters, early access, NPC creation, and more. Now then, thank you for joining us, and please enjoy this chapter in Seasons of Skyren. You can hear the sound of their wings, massive, beating, and the clouds in here start to move. And the first thing that clears away is over by the guest house. And from here, the shape of it becomes a little bit more distinct. From up close, looking up, it's just this big house facade carved into the side of the cavern. Lots of hard angles. As the clouds pull away, You can see that the building itself, the outline of the facade there, is shaped like the head of a giant hammer. Nice. And then this huge, blue-scaled dragon foot (sighs) comes down next to you. And as you look up, the clouds continue to push away. And Veriflox in person is just massive. As I mentioned before, each claw is as big as you. Looking up is like this close. It's like looking up a mountain. That's mostly perspective playing a trick, but Mm -hmm. 50, 60 feet up, huge scales. No less intimidating. Hardened and scraped over time. The scales are almost entirely blue. There are a few that are white, some that Look like they could still be impacted by the withering, but they don't seem to slow Veriflox down. As your gaze moves upward, you can see just this massive mouth filled with incredibly sharp and large teeth. And as they breathe, there's just lightning, just tiny crackles of it around the edges of their mouth. They stare down this huge horn. Ten feet, perhaps, sticking out from their head. Eyes glowing a piercing blue. And they look down at the two of you. (sighs) Where is this egg? All right. I think what I have done, we haven't talked about, like, the magic required of this, if there's any sort of ritual or anything, but I think what I've done is, like, I've placed it, I think, like, in a little bit of a nest of, like, conductive materials, so it's not, like... I can't, I can't create lightning, right? But I can strip metals off the ship in that corner kind of thing to create like a metallic nest that would like amplify the lightning. And now I'm very curious, what metal? Like, where is this from? Like pots and pans, sighting from the ship, pulleys? I, I don't know. I think it's like anything that wasn't, t- anything that's non-essential and not tied down, right? Like I've got, scraps that i found somewhere i've got a yeah for sure a couple of pots and pans like the the piece of the sign like letters from the sign like uh, just stuff that i collected wait the sign what sign the 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 name that was on the The name of the ship ship. (laughs) yeah like the part that fell off like i've repurposed the letters from it or something like that oh you you actually retrieved those that part of the sign after it broke okay I didn't know if you were stripping more letters off the side. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> so the regal part then. Good. Yes. That's not symbolism at all. Regal? Nah. Fuck that. Hit that with lightning. <sighs> Very well. I don't suppose either of you would be bold enough to hold it aloft for me. Mm, mm, give me a second. <laughs> Let me see what I have at my spell disposal. I'm just looking to see if I have anything that will give me immunity to lightning damage. <laughs> How could you have something that gives you damage immunity? I, I, you could surprise me. Give me a second. Mm, the best I can do is resistance, and whatever <laughs> he's going to do is going to do more than that. Um, so, yeah, no, not going to happen, buddy. Sorry. Um, that's not how I say that. Um, oh, wait, how much did you say the egg weighs? It's not a lot. It's I, I can't remember the exact size that I said before, but about grapefruit softball sized. You know, Give me a second. A few pounds at most. It's not heavy. I could use Mage Hand. Before you do that, Veriflox can see you mentally searching in your head. Like, oh my god, what? And there's a deep chuckle. Low. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not really necessary. Uh, just a bit of uh, dragon I, humor there. I <laughs> uh, and then I think Finnegan kind of gives into like oh, you got me there buddy <laughs> laugh had you been so bold I <sighs> I might have done it anyways just for fun but <laughs> no no uh, I could hit an egg just as easily as I could hit any one of you don't worry of course, you may not want to be too close to it, then, if you're concerned about your own safety. Uh, I so uh, we're going to step back, then, and, and let you do your part in this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last chance for anybody to be caught in the lightning breath itself, if you so want, but... No, but Finnegan's but definitely kidding. got, like... He's got his notebook out and he's, he's about to take some serious notes on what's about to happen here. Like he's gone full science nerd now. <laughs> okay. So Finnegan, Darwin, how far back are you going? Mm, I'm, I'm going a good 50 feet, like far enough, far enough that it's going to take me like a turn and a half to get to the egg. If I have to run to it, I'm going to stand, I'm going to use Finnegan as a, benchmark and then be even further out like 30 feet past that <laughs> well you're much faster than him so you could make up that distance if you had to yeah okay well from this distance you're both able to take in veriflox and while not mountain sized they are certainly enormous they approach the egg <laughs> <laughs> push themselves upright, mm. extend their wings out, and sort of bring their wings around, creating a half dome between their body and their wings, standing over this egg, over you, even at 50, 80 feet. You're far away, but it doesn't exactly feel safe. They raise their head up, turn their gaze downwards, staring straight down at this egg. You can see their chest fill with air. They breathe in. Lightning crackling at the edges of their mouth, their nostril. They open their mouth, and there is such a loud boom. Both of you make constitution saving throws. Dang. Darvin. Fourteen. Finnegan. Eight. <laughs> the force of this sound knocks both of you down, and the power of the noise just causes a ringing sensation in your ears, deafening you both for at least the next minute. Mm -hmm. And both of you watch as this line of lightning just fires down at this egg. Huge bolts 
It's difficult to see from this far away, but the egg within that little metallic nest glows brighter and brighter, and the metal starts melting from the force of this lightning. It's creating this little dome of electricity around it. The very stone underneath begins to glow red as the lightning breath continues on, beat after beat, pulse after pulse. And although your ears are filled with this ringing sensation, you can feel each successive boom, boom, boom. Arnis, within the guest house, you and the rest of the party can hear the entire cavern shake. <sighs> and flashes of insanely bright light flash in through the window. Finnegan and Darvin, you watch as the lightning continues on until Veriflox snaps their mouth shut. And there's this orb of lightning and electricity on the ground, pulsing outward, growing, shooting off bits of energy. And it glows brighter and brighter. Both of you make another constitution saving throw. Even worse, that's a six. (laughs) Darvin? Got a 28 this time. A 28? I rolled a 19. I have a nine bonus. Damn. I did not know your constitution saving throw bonus was that good. (laughs) That's amazing. There's another pulse and wave of light and energy that shoots out from this egg and like washes over the both of you. Darvin, the light is practically blinding. Squinch your eyes, cover your face, and the light fades back down. Finnegan, I don't know if it's because you're closer or you're so much more intent on taking notes, but the light just burns into your eyes. And the last image that you see is this pair of electric wings extending out from the ground where the egg hatches, and then it's just white. As the moments pass, the white dims, and you can start to make out rough shapes. It was just too bright, and you can hear Veriflox. My oh my. (laughs) That is quite the unique sight. Finnegan, Darwin. I'll leave the creature to you. I will go check on the rest of your friends. Do let me know when the phoenix is ready to play. (coughs) As they lumber away. Which I guess the two of you barely heard as the ringing in your ears (laughs) slowly subsides. (laughs) They have a very loud voice, and it manages to cut through enough. And by the time your senses return to you, You can see where the egg was. Yes, there is still quite a bit of glowing metal and glowing rock surrounding them. But there is a small lightning phoenix there, pecking at the ground, scratching at the stone, looking for food direction. I don't know what. Making slight high-pitched screech sounds as if calling out. Uh, what size is it? Let's find out. Let's see. Normally, phoenixes are medium. The one you've encountered was larger still. Um, I would say small in terms of creature size. It's juvenile, Mm -hmm. which is the benefit from doing it this way, as opposed Mm -hmm. to having them hatch is probably like a tiny creature. But small in terms of size classification, a few feet big. You know, this is the size of a large dog. Cool. So as I see it, before I even approach it, I take a moment and I'm going to cast protection from energy on myself, <laughs> specifically lightning, because I'm I'm a well-versed trainer. I know better than to just walk up to a newly hatched creature and expect it to be friendly. And I just mm-hmm. kind of start to go into, you know, trainer mode no one's seen this before but like it's it's just a very cautious like slow approach in the creature i'm trying to make eye contact with it right i mean and it's mm-hmm. just kind of classic like i don't know what it's gonna how it's gonna communicate yet like i know that it should be able to communicate but because of this magic like i don't know 
what to degree, right? What it's going to magically know, what I'm going to have to teach it. So it's a lot of like, like, Mm -hmm. hello there, little one, you know, good part, (laughs) like lots, lots of, lots of stuff like that. Like just, just slow, easy approach. (laughs) Who's a pretty bird? (laughs) Mm -hmm. As you get closer, get a better look at this juvenile lightning phoenix. The feathers on their head are a nice deep red, and that extends down their body, shifting to this brilliant blue color. Very light, and there's crackles of electricity and lightning all over them. Their beak, a darker red still, their eyes a brilliant blue, and every time they move, there's crackles of energy. Darvin, what are you doing? Finnegan is approaching the new bird. I'm standing back cautiously, ready to maybe assist if necessary, but I'm still a good ways back. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, Chris, I'm just looking to, for the rules on creature taming, as opposed to whether this creature is friendly to you or is ready for training immediately. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Make an animal handling check to see if you can approach the creature using the DC on page 18 of the BCR to determine its DC. All right. Sorry, we actually have to dive into some of these mechanics here. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. They are freshly hatched, but they are in an advanced growth state, being juvenile. So I think we would start with indifferent. They don't know you. They don't know Darwin. They don't know Veriflox. I don't really know anybody. They might have a connection with Veriflox because they helped hatch them, but that's not giving any innate trust, so to speak. So if you want to approach this creature and make an animal handling check to see how they respond to you, by all means. Is there anything that you're doing to help sway them to your cause? I think I'm going to use one of my uses of speak with animals to help help facilitate my communication with it. I am, as a tamer and a knowledgeable person in creatures, I know that eventually this creature I will be able to communicate with in like actual language, but not knowing if it's reached that state yet, I don't want to make communication harder by not being able to communicate. Okay, okay. Being newly hatched and not a beast per se, this is helpful, but it's not like they understand you verbatim. So what are you saying? What are you, what are you doing here? And then let's roll. I think using animal handling will lower the DC, not down to friendly, but from 15 to 14. Um, let me double check something really quick. I'm just trying to make sure I've got my, yeah, I can use my intelligence modifier for this. Cool. All right. So what do I say? See, I don't want to bestow it with a name yet because I know it's an intelligent enough creature that I will want to respect that. So, um, they don't have a name at all yet. Yes. Uh, But I also don't want to give it a name, not knowing how intelligent it, like how aware it is yet. And then have it be like, whoa, why are you naming me? (laughs) So I think what I'm going to say is something to the effect of young Phoenix. My name is Finnegan and I have come to help guide you along your path. Join me. Let me help you. It's very much a lot of like, I want to teach you. Let me teach you. Okay. One second. I just need to find table in this doc. There it is. Page six temperaments. But first, let's have you roll that animal handling. DC 14. Okay. That's a 19 total. Okay. Roll one more D20. Let's find out what the temperament is. Help flavor how they respond to you. At a 16. 16. Hey, that is a trusting temperament. Whew. All right, then. I've totally imprinted on this thing. Well, you are one of the first three creatures it has ever seen in its life. New life. And right now, you seem to be safe. Darwin seems to be safe. There's no threat here. They're not sure what to do. Uh, You call out. And it very awkwardly tries to get into flight. It begins approaching you, wings flapping, very clumsily getting off the ground, and is flying, roughly flying, right at you. Um, 
You have resistance to lightning damage, yes? I do. Okay. They are not doing this in any way as an attempt to hurt you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They don't know that this would hurt you, but they see you reaching out. They are inclined to trust you, and they move towards you, flying in your direction, coming to a stop right in front of you, and tries to... Um, it's not nuzzle. It's not that friendly, but is sniffing along you, you know, running a wing against you, attempt to just get a sense of you and try to do something that is also friendly. So we'll take half of this, which will come down to six lightning damage. Just not even from the one touch. It's just here and there just bzz, 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 as it's reaching out and brushing against you putting their beak, like sniffing into pockets and things and seeing if there's anything on you interesting. Mm. Finds a copper coin in your pocket, loose change, pulls it out, and you can see lightning crackling along it and just, and they just, ow, 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 eat it. (laughs) Ah, that's so cute. Uh, I hold my arm out like straight at like a 90 degree to like give it a perch to see if I can't like already start to like train it on where to go. And and I say, I, uh, my new friend have a land upon me arm and let us begin and see what it does. They are clumsy in flight. So make a strength saving throw. (laughs) This is not a graceful landing. They're attempting on your arm. (laughs) Oh, thank God. I rolled high. I rolled a 17. I have a minus one. It's a 16. (laughs) Okay. You stumble a bit. They are awkward. This is, I don't know if you've ever had just like birds on your arm before, but they know how to land on Mm -hmm. branches. But this one just hatched, still learning how to fly, still learning how to land on things that aren't sturdy. Take another three points of lightning damage. Wing hits you in the face. You you stumble a little bit. and They're not exactly light. No. They may be mostly made of lightning, but they are not light on your arm. At at their size, they're not going to be a shoulder bird. No, 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 no. Uh, Right, so... Yeah, and you do have to struggle to keep your arm up if you want to keep them there. (laughs) Uh, What I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, hold it up for a second and, like, try and, and pet the bird. I'm, like, I'm trying to bond with it right now. It's just, like, and then as I'm doing it, I'm going to try and like lower it to the ground so we can be at the ground together and just, you know, right now it's just play. <laughs> okay. Darvin, Finnegan seems to be getting along with this phoenix. Do you want to join him? Do you want to keep your distance still? And go inside uh, and tell everybody? What's the plan here? I'm going to stay right where I am. Keep my distance still. Mm-hmm. Not, not do anything to interfere. Okay. Okay. Finnegan, how long do you intend to stay out here with the new Phoenix? Long enough to get it to a point where, like, it would at least understand, like, hey, come with me. I'm going to give you a place to nest. Like, it's going to be a good chunk of this afternoon or whatever time it is. Okay. In which case, you stay out there trying to build this bond with the young lightning Phoenix. Darwin keeping a safe distance. Back inside the guest house, Arnis, you're in there with the rest of the with the rest of the party. What are you all doing in there? Okay, well, so initially we were just like waiting for the like noise and craziness to stop. Mm-hmm. I think that after it finally does stop, the first thing I do is kind of like poke my head out and just see if I can see what's going on out there. Mm-hmm. Now that Verifox has left the cavern. You can't see them anymore. The cloud cover is beginning to return. But what you can make out shortly after the sound stops, a little ball of lightning, a little lightning phoenix, uh, Finnegan attempting to make contact with them. Darwin and Finnegan both seem fine. Nobody's crying out in pain. Okay. Nobody's dead. Okay. That's, that was going to be my next question. Can I discern if they look like generally well? And at this distance, as well as you can tell. They're up okay. and moving. <laughs> That's fine then. In which case, then I head back inside um, and tell everybody it. It seems like they're okay. So 
I'm going to ask that we all just kind of like hang in here, let Finnegan do his thing. And that like when we're cool to like come out, he'll tell us. Mm -hmm. Tonk, Morello, Mahogany, rush off upstairs. Go to find a room, go get into whatever trouble they're going to get into. Sam and Carolina go start looking to see if there's some food around. Parlin takes a load off in a big chair. Felicity's just looking around. Verifox has a lot of neat stuff. Trinkets, books. Just trying to take in the space. Uh, Seth and Ristos over in a corner chatting. Asturias is lounging on the couch there. And Olwan is pacing. He's a little concerned. Just because this is possibly a dangerous place. I and mean, yeah, Veriflox seems cool so far. But part of them just can't can't shake it. Can't shake a little bit of nerve here. From the couch, Asturias says, Come on, Arnis, take a load off. Don't worry about them. They'll be fine. You said the you said the dragon would let us stay here for a little bit. Might as well relax, right? I suppose. <laughs> hmm. And sometime later, Veriflox in their dwarfish form descends down the stairs. Hmm. I guess I didn't realize how many of you there were on that ship. <laughs> no worries, though. Should be enough room. And yes, I should gather a few things before we head out. I don't suppose any of you have actually been to Lyranor before. I shake my head. <laughs> well, it will take a little bit to get there, but the distance is not exactly where I'm concerned. It is quite hot up there lately. If you didn't know, the sun doesn't exactly set. So I hope you're good with hot weather. Definitely want to bring enough water. Definitely want to keep your skin covered. My scales should be just fine, but I understand that your flesh is a little less adapted. Uh, b b okay, I'll, I'll wear long right. sleeves. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm sure I've got a few barrels of water here that I can spare for the trip. Food... Mm, a little less so. I'm sure I can find my own along the way, though. In any case, do make yourselves comfortable. By all means, rest. Sleep. It's far enough away, it doesn't really make a difference if we leave now or tomorrow. In fact, a little bit of extra time might help. I need to make sure my home is protected while I'm gone. Um, they'll let you know there are additional food and water stores in the basement. They are going to head off and take care of whatever they mean by safeguarding their home. Meanwhile, outside, Darwin and Finnegan, what are... I, I guess mostly I'm curious, like, Darwin, is there a point where you join Finnegan a little closer and participate or oversee? Or are you headed over to the guest house? Are you going to explore this cavern? What's up? I will just add that if at any point Darwin looks at all interested, I'm going to like encourage him to come and join right. just because it's not, it's not a bad thing to have the creature like connected with more than just one of us. But also there's a, I have had Cannon and of Finnegan and Darwin raising this bird together. And I'm absolutely loving that image in my head. Nice. Oh, bird dads. <laughs> yeah. I'm bird dads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm down to be a bird dad. I'll, I'll stay and help then. Okay. In which case, let's just do a couple general rolls here to see how this extended period of time goes. Why don't both of you give me an animal handling check? I got a 22. I got a 14. Okay. Darvin, you are not protected from lightning in any way. Uh, so some of this training, some of this getting to know you time with the Phoenix just results in them getting a little too close or you getting a little too close to them. And throughout the course of this time, you take 13 lightning damage. Just various shocks and jolts. They seem just as startled as you do. Like, oh, oh, that hurts people. Okay. They may not fully understand that any touch could hurt people, but they know that sometimes if they get a little too close, if they aren't careful, you know, some people get hurt. Finnegan seems a little bit more resistant to it, but Darwin, on the other hand, eh. the Lightning Phoenix is still not adept at flying, but 
is definitely not vulnerable like a hatchling would be. They are big enough and they are well formed enough that you know, a few days of just getting used to being out in the open, they may be able to fly around, do some hunting on their own, or do some searching on their own. I don't know what they eat. They did eat that coin, but that may have been more out of curiosity than <laughs> actual fulfillment. Uh, literally going to eat us out of money. Uh, I don't know what lightning birds eat. Um, based if I remember Steel my wool? research on the, <laughs> I remember my research on the general phoenix. Pretty much the same thing that like most carnivores eat. They just eat it like scorched to death because they like they cook it with their own breath, but they like it live. I see. I don't think we need to depict any hunting or live creatures being eaten. But yes, I think they can eat meat. I think they can eat seed. They can swallow coins, definitely. But I love less... okay, I love I, I love the homebrew that like this bird species might actually enjoy digesting metal because it's lightning and they can like do that. They can like in their own stomachs like digest it by liquefying it. That's kind of cool. I got I got a I got a real fun idea here, Chris Finian. I don't know if you're on board. Training pets need favored treats. I love what it. What if it's like dessert for them? What if it's just like chocolate? I love it. It's like, oh, give just me that money. It. Ow. Give it a copper and it's having a good day. I love it. I love it so much. Favored. The bigger treat. they get, the more you gotta spend on their treats. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, that is wonderfully ridiculous. I'm going to add them to the party sheet, unnamed Juvenile Lightning Phoenix, just for now, mm -hmm. just so we've got them tracked. While Finnegan and Darwin spend time with the newly hatched Lightning Phoenix, already a juvenile, and Arnis and the rest of the crew take some time to relax and prepare within Veriflox's guest house. Veriflox themselves is off somewhere in the cavern preparing for their departure, making sure that their home will remain secure in their absence. And the day will pass. Finnegan, do you bring this lightning phoenix into the guest house? Mm, I think there's an attempt to see how it reacts, but I'm already planning on like camping out outside tonight. Like, I'm not expecting this to go in a way where we're going to be inside. Okay. Because you can try if you want to. Yeah, I think there's an attempt, but... Okay. Let's roll animal handling. See how well they take to going indoors. Ooh, 25. Yeah. They're up for exploring. They're still not flying around much. They're, they're walking. They're doing that little bird hop around. Pecking at things. <laughs> smelling things. Folks are definitely interested in this little phoenix. Kids definitely want to pet them. But I think seeing some scorch marks on your clothing and your hands, Finnegan and Darvin, they, they might think twice before they do so. Pretty wise. Mm -hmm. So at this point, where everybody's gathered inside, is there anything we need to discuss before we actually discuss leaving and heading north? Not that I know of. Yeah, don't think so. Okay. In which case... Uh, Felicity. She sat on the edge of a coffee table, drink in hand. Well, I'm not going to lie. I was a little worried about coming in here, but seems like things are going okay. I mean, for one, them motions with their drink over towards the lightning phoenix, who's just pecking around the room. But perhaps a little bit more importantly, them motions up out of the building somewhere referencing Veriflox. If they're going to come with us, that's, I mean, it makes us a lot more noticeable for one, but might put us in a better position when we do come face to face with Levesque. I'm still worried though. What if it's too late? What if it's not too late, but we can't stop them anyways? If he does become a god, can't exactly kill him, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, the dwarves are affected by the withering, right? They certainly were, yes. They're recovering. So, in theory, Arnis could, if not 
kill him, really mess him up. In theory. And is this a point Finnegan wants to make? This is not a point Finnegan would know how to make. This is a point okay. Chris is telling everyone <laughs> okay. they can make. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't know if this was Finnegan bringing it up and Felicity or somebody could respond. Um, Felicity continues, and even if he hasn't completed his task, we do have to contend with Agni Tai. She may only be contractually obligated to help him, but she takes that pretty seriously. Um, she glances over at Finnegan. I... <laughs> Do you, would you feel okay attacking her? Would you be able to? My intention is not to attack her. It is to try to free, find a way to free her. I mean, if you've got an idea of how to get her out of one of her own contracts, I'd be a start. Oh, I would say the first step is to find and figure out what exactly the contract is. Or at least find her and ask there was a way for us to be able to address her and talk to her without the dwarven usurper knowing that would be a good start. Agreed. We're a long way from Tiff's looking glass, so that's probably out of the question. But maybe something face-to-face when we actually get there. If only we knew where she'd be. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, we do have some time between now and then, of course. Time to explore ideas if we have any. But I think we're going to have to be ready to make a decision in the moment if it comes down to it. There's a chance we won't see her until we actually have to fight her. And the Fesk. And who knows what else he has up his sleeve. I, but I do believe, based on my understanding of most contracts, when the contract holder dies, those who are holding to it are freed from that contract. Yes. I'm fairly certain that If Levesque were to be dead, she wouldn't have to hold up her end of the contract anymore. I'm fairly certain that if either side of a contract dies, it becomes null and void. Although I do agree she'd probably focus on Levesque. He seems the easier target. She wasn't there before, so she'll ask, Other than Agni Tai, do you know what else he has at his disposal? Or who else? Let's just ask this of the group. That is not an answer for Finnegan. Darvin. I don't remember, do we? Some. No. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, he's got the Glamour Island. but that's, Does he still I have that? That's how they got to where they're going. Okay. Or how they are getting there. We don't know they're there yet. Yeah, because Ag- Agni Tai was the one making it move. Right, from under the stage thing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Agni Tai does have contracts with a number of beings who help move the island through the water. Yeah. Um, maybe let's not break those contracts, unless we want to drop an island somewhere. <laughs> Preferably not on other land, but... <laughs> no, because that's how you get Sokovian Accords. Indeed, indeed. <sighs> an island? Like a whole island? Does it have defenses? Not a question. I know the answer to. Is this like a giant flying fort we're going after? Well, I mean, yeah, it has defenses. Like what? The last time we were there, and Darwin can help me out if he remembers more, the, like, plants on the island attacked us. And also, like, plant creatures, too. Like, those seem to be, like, the guardians of the island pretty much exclusively. Um, Any other, like, fight we had was for other reasons with, like, humanoid (laughs) sources. Which may or may not be there now. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but we don't know if anybody else is on the island at the moment, right? Right. You know Nowhere is not, and you know uh, Mavic is not, because he's dead. Well. Outside of Levesque and Agni Tai, and then whatever guards or other forces he may have in his employ, or even just servants. There's wait staff on that island, but you don't know how many of them remain. Okay. According to your report from Mavic, he seemed perfectly comfortable with hijacking the island and the purpose of the glamour to his own ends. But that's what Glamour members 
do. They look out for themselves. They work together for a balance of power, but Levesque sees becoming a god as just an unbeatable power. So he wouldn't need allies. That's why he broke your uh, your mentor. What was his name? I forget. But Wasn't it Gimbal Ningle? Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> the most ridiculous name we could come up with. Yeah, that's why I had no problem breaking Gimbal. The Gimbal's of no use. And at the time, you know, Withering was permanent, just dead. So, fuck off. Okay. Um, well, Felicity sets her drink down on the coffee table, slaps her hand down to her thigh. Flying off to an unknown land to fight unknown enemies. What could go wrong? <laughs> we should rest. We should prepare. I know we've got some time before we get there, but it sounds dangerous. At least with these other places, we kind of had an idea of where we were going. Although if you've been to the island before, and it's still there, maybe it won't be so unknown. <laughs> Depends on if he's on it or not. Mm-hmm. Unless anybody needs her, she's going to head upstairs and rest. Nope. Come on. Anything else people want to do before we leave Veriflox's cavern? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. As Felicity heads upstairs, Olwen's going to watch her head up and then turn to the group. Um, so are we heading straight there in the morning? Direct flight to Leonor? I think that's the plan. Okay. Well, I guess I need some rest, too. Mm. I'm actually going to head back to the ship. I'll rest there. Not that I don't trust Veriflox, but don't like leaving it uh, unattended. He heads out. Yep. Okay. So there's nothing else we want to do here tonight. Is there anything else people want to do on Celestia before we leave? I got nothing. I think we're good unless... Unless for some reason we need to free Cade before we go. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts about that workshop. Feeling like maybe we should check that out first. I mean, you can ask him if he's okay with waiting till this thing is done, but I might ask him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great idea. I'm going to ask Cade. Should we check out the workshop before we do this? Well, Darwin, if we go there... It's still intact. I have no reason to believe Veriflox has failed there. It would mean I'd be able to get my own body sooner as opposed to later. It would mean I'd have to depart from you, though. But you'd still come with us. (laughs) (laughs) Question mark. I could. I could. As long as I'm not too heavy for the ship. (laughs) He laughs from within your head. But I mean, I know you're not completely deathless anymore, Darvin. If you die while I'm inside of you, we are both going to Corm's realm. But you are still pretty hardy. I don't think once since I've been with you have you been that close to death. I guess what I'm trying to say, Darvin, is I trust your judgment. If you want to keep me along for the ride, I'll do it. If we want to go visit this workshop, See about getting me my own body. I'm up for it. That workshop's not going anywhere. Okay. It's your call. Guys, I think we got to hit up this workshop real quick first. (laughs) So I just want to make sure that you do understand that in doing that, you will very likely lose all of the powers you've been given because you have Kit inside of you. Yes, I understand. It's the right thing to do. If I died... I would feel bad. And I just feel like I'm probably going to die. Maybe. <laughs> Dude, you have I'm never been that, too. that close to dying. <laughs> right, but but it's like if you tempt fate by carrying all your le- eggs in one basket, then of course you drop the basket, right? But if you don't tempt fate, maybe you don't drop the basket. Mm-hmm. It's like buying insurance and then never needing it. Yes. As soon as you don't have that insurance... Then you oh, need no. it. <laughs> yep. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> I digress. <laughs> Who else is still down here? I mean, Felicity's already headed upstairs. 
She'd be the one first to react to Darwin. Oh, an old one actually just went outside too. <laughs> the two people closest to Darwin have left. <laughs> In which case, Sam will say, Well, Darwin, I know it's not an easy decision, but if it's what you want to do, I support you. Arnis Finnegan, what do you think? We've already made detour because of me. I can't stand in the way of one you want to make. I do have concerns about how much time we're taking to get to our destination, though. I have that too, but you're right, Darwin. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, you know what they say about the, the road to Quorum's Round? It's paved with good intentions. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> well, if we're headed there anyway, we may as well do the right thing along the way. All right, before we go, there is one, more, one question I must ask. <laughs> Darwin, you're comfortable giving away this much power, knowing what we're about to face, knowing that Kate could just decide to walk away and not aid us. It's a risk, I admit, but I have a feeling it'll work out. All right. All right. All right. Sam says, okay, well, I think somebody should let our host know then that we're not headed out right away. I'll go talk to Olwan, let him know that we're not leaving in the morning. Sam will head out. I think shortly after Sam leaves, you hear the familiar <laughs> of Veriflox returning and coming down the stairs, dusting off their hands, smoothing down their coat. Oh, well, just about everything is set. Only need one last touch after we leave the cavern, protected as much as I can. We all set for a good night's rest and then leave it in the morning? Uh, for one of those two things, definitely. It, uh, it turns out that we have one more errand of sorts that we need to run here. It didn't feel right being so close to a place where Cade could be free to, to leave things the way they were before we went off to a big fight. So we're going to get him out of Darwin's head before we go. <laughs> they turn to Darwin. Hmm. So stop in the workshop then. Yeah, if that's okay. I realized it seemed better to do this sooner. Well, by foot, it's a good day, day and a half hike from here, deeper into the cavern. We can go whenever you're ready. I, I can lead the way. Hmm. I have no doubt Cade remembers where it is, but I've put up a few extra safeguards since his absence. We can leave whenever you're ready. Today, tomorrow, a week from now. I think I'm ready right now. Yeah, same. We should go now. How much longer is left in this day? Um, it's got to be into the afternoon time at the very least, because you spent a good amount of time out there with the Lightning Phoenix. Mm-hmm getting to know them playing along. So at the very least, I would say three o'clock in the afternoon, if not like four or five. So then Finnegan's going to say, Oh yeah, this, at this point, half a day is half a day. We might as well rest in the lap of luxury and leave in the morning. Well, it does make a good point. I just didn't want to waste any time if we didn't have to. That was my only thought. But if we think it's, more worth it to sleep the night first, then I'm good with that. Okay. Veriflox says, hmm, that's fine by me. You can rest here. I will rest in my own bed. I prefer to sleep in my natural form. This can be cozy, but it's far more relaxing being myself. Well, in which case, when you're ready in the morning, join me on the roof, such as it is. Okay. In which case... Vera Fox will head upstairs and leave the guest house, so you all can rest. When morning comes, you head upstairs to the roof, such as it is. The stairs ascend through a few stories here within this guest house, and you come up to this large platform. It very much looks like a stone roof, has a natural cavern wall on one side, and on the other is a path leading out to the cavern at large. Very clearly where Veriflox comes in and out rather than using the front door. And you have to wait a little bit before Veriflox arrives. Perhaps a few minutes longer than what you would like. But eventually, they come walking down the path ahead of you. 
again, in their nice soft leather clothes, a thick woolen coat over that, back in their dwarfish form, in case that wasn't clear. <sighs> Trusted you all slept well. Right. Well then, if we are off to Kate's workshop, then we'd better get moving. Stay close to me, don't go off the path, and you should be fine. There are many tunnels and pathways here in this cavern. It would be very easy to get lost. So, let's move. They begin heading off down the path, moving at a speed greater than what their size might indicate. While they might be in a dwarf-ish form, they are still moving with uh, a fair amount of speed. Very comfortable here in these tunnels. And Veriflox will lead you down the path. They keep up this good pace for a good six or seven hours, winding through the tunnels, not even stopping to consider forks in the road. It twists, it turns, and indeed, if you were not following Veriflox, it seems like it would be very easy to get lost in here. And they come to an abrupt stop. <laughs> Hope nobody's too tired just yet. We're only about halfway there, but come to the first of my safeguards here. They look right at Darwin. Cade, you'll have to forgive me, but <laughs> I felt a few more security measures were appropriate. There's a fork here in the path, and on one side, they take a few steps in, extend an arm out, and lightning just fills that hallway there. Doesn't hurt them, obviously. As you can see, I didn't want anybody just wandering in. It doesn't hurt me, obviously, but I'm going to assume that the rest of you might have an issue with it. So, now would be a good time to catch your breath, have a bite, rest. I'll take care of this. Just give me a few minutes. And they turn, they head down the path. As they do so, lightning erupts from the walls, constantly striking them. And they disappear down the tunnel as it fills with lightning. And with that, we'll bring this chapter to a close. But the story will always continue. Thanks again to all of our Patreon patrons for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash Podcast and pick out a level that's right for you. Before we go, I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at the $5 and up tiers. At the $5 city council level, thank you, Shannon DeMello. At the $10 mayor level, thank you, Christopher DeMello. At the $15 governor level, thank you, Phoenix Bryan and Sierra Jones. Thank you for listening to this chapter in Seasons of Skyrend. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find us. If you want to chat, we're on Twitter at Skyrend Podcast. You can join our Discord server, or you can email us at skyrenpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us online at skyrenpodcast.com. As always, thanks to Daryl Barnes for creating our theme music. You can find them on Twitter at Daryl Barnes underscore. We also want to thank the talented at Gabby underscore Desu on Twitter for our fantastic podcast art. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on Seasons of Skyrend.